The best way to succeed in this project is to make sure that you're well prepared for day one. If you're not prepared and you haven't read your ma instructions manual, your team will not be successful. Uh, just because you'll be trying to catch up on day one, you'll be reading. Um, everything comes at you so fast on day one where you have uh, people that you have to make sure that you hire uh, as well as setting any sort of marketing research you're going to be hiring. Um, and if you don't understand how to do that, then your team is going to be behind. It's going to be a steep hill to climb and your team just won't be as successful as some of the other teams that were uh, better prepared for the project. So I think one of the most important factors in the sales simulation process was um, just purchasing the market research. So it uh, and had things on there like uh, sales by each salesperson per region. So that gave you uh, the number of how your salespeople were producing, uh, let you know what adjustments you need to make if you need to relocate them, let them go, or possibly even retrain them. Uh, there's also stuff like the projected units sold per region and uh, the market share, which helped us build a, a production model of how many units we think that we could sell per each region with those salespeople in those regions. So uh, overall, it's, it's very beneficial. It also included things like uh, income statements and also the, uh, which helps the cost of goods sold and other factors like that. So I think the market research was one of our best decisions in purchasing that, and uh, I would recommend using that in the future. This is David Lenahan here to talk about the hiring process. An important thing to think of to succeed at this section is to treat resumes as if they were real people. Since you have to go through dozens of applications and are spending thousands of dollars on people, you want to make sure to put them in the right location. It does not make sense to move someone from New York and put them all the way to an area that they're not used to like California. Lastly, make sure to keep your employees happy by giving them a reward system and providing them good commission. If you think you will make more by cutting their salary or commission, it will just lead to them leaving your organization. What I want to talk about for the sim sales simulation model is the production forecasting. I think that what's important is to create a model and stick to it. Use a Google Sheet or an Excel sheet um, to do the math for you. That way you can input the numbers every quarter when they change. Um, make sure you're being consistent with your forecasting. And it's important to buy the market research that um, has the sales forecast for each quarter. That way you're uh, forecasting your numbers accurately. talk about the difference between model A and model B and how you should put your pricing based on that. So your model A emphasis is basically the amount that you want to put towards the lower brand versus the upper class, uh, the higher option, which is model B. And then you're also going to want to have to set your prices based on those. So you're going to want to do your market research, but at the same time, you're going to want to make sure that when you're setting your prices, you're not setting them so low that you're not making money on your products. So that's something that you really need to pay attention to when you're setting your, um, you're setting your prices on your quarter one of your decision form.